chance to begin again. Don't focus on the failure of yesterday. Start today with positive thoughts and expectations. With this note, it gives immense pleasure to deliver the welcome address of this great occasion. First of all, I would like to thank the God Almighty. Then I would like to welcome our Anjak management and our correspondent uh, Tiriji Abhiruban, our dynamic principal Dr. C. Asok sir, the aggregation ambassador Dr. M. K. Rajan sir, IQAC coordinator Professor R. Jagannathan sir, for providing an opportunity to conduct this three days faculty development program on technologies for effective teaching, learning and evaluation. Then I bid a warm welcome to our head of the department Dr. J. Jabakumari Bila Vasandi, ma'am, who always motivate and support us for conducting such type of faculty development program in a great manner. Welcome you, ma'am. In this fine occasion, on behalf of our college, IQSC, and the Department of CSSF, I wholeheartedly welcome today's resource person, Mr. J. Jonathan Jabas, who is a solution architect, Hewalt Beckett Enterprise, Bengaluru and who is going to deliver the talk on use of virtualization and the container technologies in educational infrastructure. We are grateful to him for accepting our invitation and becoming a chief guest of today's event. We are so honored to have him as a chief guest for the third day session. I welcome you, sir. Then I bid a warm welcome to the organizing secretary, Mrs. K. Meena. Uh, who has taken much more effort to conduct this type of F FTP. Welcome you, ma'am. Then I would like to welcome the participants from many institutions of ANJAC and from other institutions. Welcome you all for this final day session. Last but not least, I welcome all the staff members and the student volunteers for this session. I welcome one and all. Thank you, ma'am. I would like to welcome I would like to welcome, to welcome our head of the department, Dr. J. Jabakumari. A pleasant good morning to one and all gathered here. In this third day faculty development program organized by Ayanada Jani Hemal College, Sivahasi. Uh, and this FDP is organized under the scheme of Parama scheme by UGC for the development of colleges in various quality initiatives. And this faculty development program is organized by Computer Science Department, self financing, along with jointly hands with. Um, IQAC Internal Quality Assurance Cell of Ayanada Jani Hamal College Sivakasi. So under this Parama scheme, we are not only conducting various activities for the mentor colleges, but also throughout the India, we are conducting the faculty development program on the aspect of quality improvement among the teaching fraternity. And two days we have already crossed, and in the first day, um, Mrs. Dr. K. Aruna Devi, ma'am, delivered a talk on various digital tools which are used for teaching and learning process. The second day, Dr. B. Silvarani from VIT Bellur has delivered a talk on various tools and techniques that are used for online evaluation and also demonstrated four tools how to handle the examination through online, through which we can conduct that examination through online. And today we are here uh, to know about various uh, technique virtualization tools which are used for teaching and learning process that is meant for the teaching profession. And today's uh, chief guest, Mr. Jonathan Jabas, MCA from HP Bangalore is going to deliver you various aspects on that topic. And uh, um, 
and in this session if you are, if you have any doubts regarding the implementation of various tools and techniques uh, that the resource person is going to deliver you may ask at the final uh, in the question answering session at the final of the today's program and let me welcome all the participants once again from uh, all over the world, all over the india uh, from various institutions to this fdp and also our own department members and i also congratulate and appreciate mrs k meena organizing secretary for this 3 day fdp she wonderfully organized each and every moment of the fdp uh, in a very nice manner and i also thank the colleague of my department remaining nine members of my department as well as the students friends who are also supported to to the successful conduct of this fdp now i welcome the resource person once again amist is busy schedule to our fdp and let me give the conclude my talk and hand over the session to the organizer thank you all right uh, thank you thank you dr uh, jabakmari vasanthi ma'am for giving me thank you ma'am i like to welcome mr c anand sir to deliver chief guest introduction Uh, I am very pleasure in uh, introducing uh, Chief Guest Mr. Jonathan Sabis, sorry, Jabas MCA, who is a solution architect at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Bengaluru, Alban, Karnataka. Uh, this uh, have a specialization of the uh, Chief Guest. He has a specialization in data center, virtualization, monitoring and automation, digital workplace and cloud computing, engineering and solutions. He, he is having an experience in VMware, vSphere products, products manager, VMware app volumes and vRealize operations and vRealize automation. His strengths are systematic and logical approach to definitive problem statement vision to perceive solutions and think to the vision customer focus quick learning flexibility and adaptability and uh, and she is he is having a good communication his experience in the in it sector is in the year from March 2004 to May 2005, he served as a technical executive in C Cube Solutions. Then he he was working as a senior solution consultant in Hewlett Packard Enterprise from May 2005 to March 2017. Then he acted as a senior enterprise architect. in hanivel technologies from april 2017 to july 2019 currently he served as a solution architect at hewlett packard enterprise from july 2019 to till date and he has some more certifications in the field of it that is he, he has owned citrix certificate certified associate for virtualization vmware certified professional for data center then vm certified professional for desktop and mobility and then vmware certified professional for cloud management he is also having a red hat certified system administrator he is he also have itil v3 foundation certificate i am very i am i am very thankful to our uh, uh, head of the department dr j jabakumar pura vasini ma'am for uh, intro for giving me an opportunity to introduce her ji i welcome you sir mr jonathan jabas sir and i hand over the session to mr jonathan jabas sir thank you thank all right you, good morning good everyone morning, everyone sir sharing is having more with this note i would like to welcome our chief guest mr j jonathan jabis 
solution arch architect havelet packet enterprise bangalore to start the session welcome sir all right uh, thank you for the welcome uh, thank you for the welcome and um, thank you for mr Doug, uh, mr anand for giving a good introduction session and uh, thank you dr jabakumar bulasanthi for uh, presiding this function as well as uh, giving me uh, an wonderful opportunity to deliver uh, this session to uh, the faculty of uh, inr janimal college uh, computer department of computer science self financing and uh, the ica teams and uh, i'm proud to uh, uh, take the session again I, i hope this is my third session i'm taking and uh, i'm i'm also proud to say that i am an alumni of anjak i did my uh, bsc uh, chemistry in anjak 1991 94 batch and did my mca uh, uh, in uh, university of chennai and then i start I, i have closely have 25 plus years of experience in it industry and currently i'm working in hero packet enterprise as a solution architect uh, developing um virtualization cloud computing automation solutions to various uh, um uh, entities like education institutions universities uh, then banks uh, airline industries and many more uh, industries we have done a lot of projects okay so with that let me go ahead and share my screen to start the session so uh, the, the today's topic is um, uh, is how are we going to use this virtualization and container technology in educational infrastructure okay so maybe this uh, some of these technologies may be known to you some of the technologies may be a new technology for you uh, but uh, it is worth understanding the concepts of these technologies and how they are actually effectively can be used in educational infrastructure right so um, <clears throat> Uh, with that i will go to the agenda so i will i will try to cover about the virtualization and vmware containers then uh, virtual desktop infrastructure and digital workspace and we will have a q and a so all these solutions put together we call uh, as a, a digital um, a digital uh, education system or digital um, um, learning process and all we we call right so we will see uh, the traditional education system how the, how it looks like okay in if you take in the college campus network we have lot of um, um, types right we have classrooms we have library we have office administration we have labs and similar halls and hostel for uh, uh, people who stay and students who stay and uh, learn uh, the <clears throat> okay so how are we trying to compare with the current traditional system and how the digitalized uh, education system infrastructure is going to be looking like right so if we take the classroom maybe we started with a blackboard then we came with the digital boards and um, with some uh, um, but we didn't had a real time demo of what we are teaching right so we don't have an option to do it and uh, uh, we didn't had a proper network connectivity to between uh, the labs and the classrooms or the office so uh, there was no secure internet also there was no internet connection real time to show what is actually happening when we teach so it it doesn't matter whether we are teaching a technical non technical if you have those uh, uh, facilities in place it will be an effective teaching for students and same thing for library it all rack and stack with physical books right we have a big books so rack and stack and then somebody has to physically manage that uh, li library and then came up with e books and uh, uh, and then uh, soft copies and all came for the uh, complete uh, books articles uh, journals everything we started to um, put everything in the library and it was also managed to do the record management right in terms of library and office administration uh, right from the billing or accounting uh, fees management payment system and office administration staff selection hiring and uh, uh, student admission overall college administration all these things are a day in day out activity for each section right right from classroom who to who the the staff and students spend time and the library students spend time and staff spend time and somebody should manage that and office administration some people will have to be there for managing all this clerical activities lab it's again an important thing it's not just computer lab it's even uh, a science lab or physics lab or chemistry lab if it is having the adequate um, infrastructure in terms of it 
then the learning will be more different right although uh, we have we will be using those apparatuses and chemicals to test and, and learn in the lab but at the same time if it is contributing there then it's an added value because we get some real time explanation real time uh, uh, <clears throat> demo to what we do and then it is easy for students to um, uh, follow that and then and uh, better do their uh, labs right so that is one thing and then coming to seminar hall even hostel i would take an example there is no connectivity between hostel and the class right there is no connectivity between hostel and the college campus though it is in the same campus but there is no connectivity in terms of network meaning why we are specifically saying because once uh, students go back to the hostel uh, they they are get they, they get disconnected from the college they just learn what they was what they were taught in terms of uh, taking notes or uh, nowadays we use people use uh, laptops and mobile phones to record or something we do but end of the day these are all not a, a continuous learning process it's not a secured way of doing it right and uh, physical presence is always required for um, anybody to learn anybody to come in for even for seminar hall uh, it take uh, go for a presentation you go for a mass uh, presentation and the seminar hall also should have some it equipments Uh, connected to your uh, infrastructure so that the real time data of what we are going to deliver in the seminar can be shown uh, to the participants right so traditionally if if we look into this uh, the the oral infrastructure this is how it looks like every college campus will look like but how are we going to modernize this with the digital education infrastructure okay so um, classrooms maybe we can we have the smart uh, smart board system smart classrooms are there there are a lot of tools available so what i'm trying to say is how are we going to use this virtual infrastructure to better utilize all these features given for each and every component right so classroom you need you will have a better connected networks between your data center and the uh, all the classrooms will have uh, networks connected so that any staff who come and deliver they can quickly log in to the system they can show uh, what they are going to teach they can um, for any uh, any kind of uh, syncing with the office they can easily uh, communicate uh, over the network so obviously you will have a better connectivity to your infrastructure and uh, se better security and 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 again uh, the virtual instructor led classes also can be delivered real time instead of um, somebody sitting and uh, teaching classes with this pandemic situation we have seen a lot of uh, people a uh, lot of uh, invest universities and uh, institutions they started giving this online education right through google meet or uh, teams or some some media but in, in if you have certain infrastructure in place wherein you can deliver a virtual instructor led classes Uh, meaning everybody can participate in, in the in the virtual in the virtual classes and it can it will be a live session right and you will have a connected lab to do it uh, if it is a technical session technical uh, learning so this is all about the classroom library obviously we know it nowadays it is along with the physical books we also have ebooks proper we have library management system application and then uh, remote access to the digital library is there content libraries are there very very have collection of books articles journals kept in one one repository right so all these are how we can achieve because end of the day to achieve these things in terms of library we need to have some system to run these run this uh, some uh, the infrastructure to run these systems right so lms is one library management system in one one application which is which has to run in some infrastructure remote access to digital library so digital library is one application for that we need to have a proper connectivity to that infrastructure so that students can uh, access the digital library anytime anywhere right so that is all that is called the uh, uh, the latest digital education system in that digital education system bmr uh, or i am just saying virtualization is going to play a bigger role because we will have our own co college campus data center i will let you know i will tell you what all ways we can have the infrastructure for the education okay um <clears throat> Uh, so and then for office administration we have all accounting packages erp packages internet college portals admissions are done online entrance exams interviews happen online online payment gateways so all those things we re always rely on some application vendors who deliver that instead if you have an infrastructure in place we can actually in house we develop all these things and uh, or uh, we uh, import we we buy that application from a vendor and we run it on your infrastructure so the the entire thing is actually bound to a particular campus bound to a particular network which is tight within a campus so it is really a secured one right so this is one thing uh, I, uh, i wanted to uh, highlight and then labs obviously for labs it is always on demand 
nowadays uh, with the it people uh, having uh, the uh, labs it's more of a real time they want to try and out uh, different um, a combination of codes in different platforms for example uh, if i am if a, if a student is working on a java platform uh, java uh, application development uh, he, he may want to try that code on a um, um, ubuntu machine he may want to try the code on a red hat or windows real time they want to deploy that application they want to develop the application in multiple platforms so if uh, in a traditional lab setup we we have to uh, spin up a machine we have to bring up we have to set that machine environment then only the students can um, <clears throat> deploy the application right so they can test develop the application for that there is a lot of lead time there is a lot of wait time is there so they have to wait for the machines to come up and then they can start accessing it but instead if you have some some sort of a self service portal mechanism where student can request a resource it will automatically get provisioned in the college data data center and then the students get access to the machine and then they can pretty much start accessing uh, the uh, machine to run their uh, development application and uh, <clears throat> So likewise the the college data center lab can be easily integrated with the private cloud hybrid cloud or public cloud i will let you know how it is going to look like in the coming slides same thing for the hostel and seminar halls remote connectivity lab is also there because students can continue to access the lab from the hostel using their own devices that is that we, we call it as bring your own device or digital workspace right so that plays a bigger role in uh, in 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 terms of education institute because students not always spend time in college they go back to their home they go back to their hostel right and and they they go back to uh, some some other places or they go to some other places to learn or something so wherever they go they get connected to their infrastructure which is inside their college it's not something open to inter open to internet it is still restricted access is there and they can still access the restricted contents over the internet using any device so this kind of, kind of uh, uh, infrastructure can be achieved for the college uh, education infrastructure and secure internet is always there because if you have open internet it is difficult to manage because hackers are always there so uh, so we will we will we will need to have adequate uh, firewall or uh, security uh, mechanism in the infrastructure which also can be uh, which also can run in a virtual platform uh, to secure the internet access same thing digital presentation online meetings collaboration tools can also be used so that um, the, uh, the the overall uh, communication between the staff and student or the staff and the uh, management all happens over digital communication but all to, to achieve all these things to achieve all these solutions we need to have a common platform that platform is the one which i'm going to talk about because if you take um, uh, for online online learning we have a lot of uh, lot of uh, portals available if you want to have a, a collaboration calls even we have online meetings we have um, we have google meet we have microsoft teams but they are all different vendors so to run all these solutions inside a campus network we need to have a solid infrastructure and nowadays we only have uh, a connected network in in college with minimal uh, setup where we have the it lab the computer labs will have some networks connected with with the, with the internet and firewall uh, switches and all will be there so that um, so that multiple students can log in at the same time but again these are all physical devices sitting on the table so they have physical presence is always required so if if a so if a computer student wants to uh, uh, do some practical activity he has to go physically go there to the lab connect to the uh, machine then do it right so those things can be easily achieved uh, if you actually virtualize all the infrastructure and then um, the entire thing will become a digital education right this is the overall difference between traditional and digital education system now let us see how uh, the virtualization is going to play a bigger role so in a traditional architecture um, like i said you know, let's take an example of our computer lab we will have desktops set for every uh, student or even the uh, even for staff also it is required to log in and and uh, check the uh, code development or check the program developed by uh, students or even to develop something right so everybody needs a physical uh, resources so and with the traditional art, with the traditional architecture it is very it is always prone to failures hardware devices are always prone to failures right if one laptop goes or one desktop goes then we have to identify what is the fault then replace the subsequent failed component be it a storage or network ram then if the machine will come up or if it always fail we we reinstall so we can avoid so all the the traditional architecture will all have these um, glitches everywhere it will all have these caveats everywhere 
and provisioning is again a challenge if you want to suddenly if you are going for a, a new admission for a new batches if you need another 100 machine then immediately we have to uh, uh, invest something uh, for the uh, for uh, for buying those resources then we have to set it up then we have to install get connected all those things are a lot of manual jobs are there and maintenance and management also requires high cost right so how are you going to uh, overcome this is virtual infrastructure so virtual infrastructure what it does is instead of running on a desktop level um, uh, machines we are just going to run on servers okay so servers will uh, will have a, a symmetric multi processing technology wherein multiple threads can be initiated uh, to run uh, uh, in parallel so how this virtual infrastructure is going to help even more is even with a server uh, physical server what we do is we install something called hypervisor that hypervisor which is sitting on top of the hardware that is the operating system for the virtualization okay and then on top of that we create multiple instances of virtual machines so instead of having one 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 to one mapping uh, to a student to a lap to a desktop to connect to one os we can have one server and have uh, the hypervisor installation done and create multiple instances of vm so that many people can connect it to the one server right so um, it again the, the the provisioning of these machines depend on the capacity of what we have so um, and um, so if i let me go ahead and explain the overall architecture high level architecture here so let's see from the right side first okay i was talking about this campaign infrastructure data center right so we have the server infrastructure servers will have vms right now in this particular box we have two vms two servers two physical servers it can be a dell server it can be hp server it can be ibm server as long as the server supports running the hypervisor we can install the hypervisor and create multiple instances of virtual machine according to the capacity available according to the ram according to the cpu according to the disk space available and there are also external networking and storage components can be added to that so that um um you get even more capacity to the infrastructure right so instead of running uh, all individual machines what we do is we can have a centralized infrastructure it's called as a campus infrastructure data center or private cloud we call it as because what is private cloud everything is private to in to your organization to your uh, to your entity or to your uh, university so everything is bound to a single uh, boundary so we call it as private cloud and uh, we maybe um, in the in the in the in the education system they must have done they must have had some minimal budget for setting up this infrastructure so we'll start with two servers we'll spin up uh, or we'll provision around 100 machines 100 virtual machines and then install the required operating system and the best part is we can have multiple um, uh, os flavors running right so we can have vms with windows vms with ubuntu or vms with linux or even vms with um, um, any other operating system uh, even mac supports right so based on that we can can we can create those machines have it ready for the students and they can actually come and log into that um, tools right so if at all there is another way of for campus setup is we can set up hybrid cloud what do, what does this mean um, if we do not have the enough resources if we do not have the adequate resources in the campus infrastructure meaning uh, if if it is completely occupied what we can do is we can the organization or the 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 educational management can spend some more fund budget on buying some subscription from public clouds like you have amazon aws microsoft azure and google cloud platform so from these cloud service vendors we can get some um uh, some some uh, services some uh, some portion of their um, cloud solution to us so that our platform can be extended to the cloud also that is also very much possible in this virtual infrastructure right we have uh, certain connectors to connect your uh, private cloud to the public cloud so once the private cloud is extended to the public cloud uh, then this becomes what they call hybrid cloud and you will have proper firewall uh, interfaces between the cloud and the uh, infrastructure like i said this is completely private cloud so you will have all the uh, uh, all the components installed within the campus and then you will have those firewall devices which will allow the connection to uh, the, the the public cloud um, uh, services right so this is the second way of handling uh, the education infrastructure if there are if uh, the resources are constrained on the data center campus data center and if you have budgets to extend the workloads or extend the virtual machines to the cloud we can do it this is the second option the third option is 
what if if the if the if the institution does not even have a, a data center does not even have a campus data center then they can directly go for cloud platform it's only okay so cloud for platform is also more secure like you have microsoft azure and um, they also offer uh, all this all their services as free for example if you go for microsoft azure subscription you get a you know, microsoft o365 uh, complete uh, licensing Um, based on the subscription, what we buy, that means we can use the teams, we can use uh, uh, their office, we can use use their uh, all their relevant dependent products. Same thing if you go for Google, they will give you the Gmail uh, official Gmail uh, and, and service. Then uh, Google Drive will be more capacity. So all those additional features will be given by those. Cloud service providers, which can be leveraged, which can be used to students, so that uh, they can you can they can also have some official email addresses and then have some uh, cloud storage to store their data. And the same thing, best part is the same thing can be monitored by who is going to manage this. At the end of the day, the, the the cloud administrator from the institution will be managing and monitoring all this uh, setup. Will have access to, um, will have uh, some audit level of access to this setup, so that they can it becomes more uh, secure and complaints to the or uh, the institution rather than uh, getting uh, exploited, right? So, uh, so there are three ways we can look at it for the campus setup. One is the private cloud, and then a hybrid cloud with the, which is a combination of uh, private cloud and public cloud, and then if you can go directly go for only the public cloud if you do not have the campus data center. So now let me come to the left side. What all we have? So we should all we have this particular setup in the campus. If you have the adequate infrastructure to run all these virtual machine workloads in your college campus infrastructure, then what else we can do for the end users? End users here we are students and staff, and we can also use, include the managements also, right? Managing people are there, so they also want to uh, log in and check their uh, information. So having a centralized data center will let the organization or the institute. To run all their dependent workloads or applications or services from a single location, and users, be it a student or staff or a management, they can log in um, even from an external network, even from internet, they can access all these um, uh, internal resources securely. Because you will have two levels of firewall here: one firewall for the end-user communication, one firewall for the public cloud communication. This is how the traditional setup will look like uh, in terms of virtualization. So, um, be it a student or a uh, staff, we can see we can give them on-demand labs. Like I said, right? So, student they can request. Uh, you can they can dynamically request some lab. And then they can they get the machines provisioned in the data center, and they get access over the internet. So even when they are not in college, not in the say the campus, they get access to the labs. Remote connectivity again secure because you have firewall connection. So you have restrictions everywhere. You have two levels of authentication. One is your internal authentication. Next is your token authentication. Nowadays we have different authentication mechanisms like a secure token, uh, mobile authentication. And um, uh, pin authentication, lot many authentication tools are there to make the connection even more secure, right? And anywhere, any device is one concept. And um, so, like I said, the digital workspace, wherein uh, um, they don't really need to uh, access these resources with the or the college provided uh, devices like laptop or desktop. They can use their personal devices as long as those devices are managed by the college uh, administration, IT administration. Yeah, right. and then um, uh, test engines, live exams can be hand uh, can be conducted for the students, and even for the staff, they can conduct live classes and live demos uh, by even sitting at home. They can connect to the college campus over the internet, and they can get their their resources, uh, which is inside the prepared, and they can present it to the users, uh, present it to the students uh, while delivering the session classes. Right. So this is the high-level architecture. How a typical uh, digital education system will look like in in terms of uh, uh, virtualizing virtualizing it, and what all benefits we get out of it. Right. And the second thing, let's see uh, in detail more in in detail in terms of how the components will look like, and what all components we have in VM uh, in virtualization. How are they going to use these uh, uh, the capabilities? For example, th this is what I told. These are servers, right? Infrastructure. You were uh, in the previous slide. We have this server infrastructure. Same thing. We will have servers and storage devices. Okay, we call it a server pool and storage pool. Meaning, the more you have servers, the more you have storage capacity. The more users, the more uh, machines you can create for your students or for uh, the staff. 
so that um, um, the um, so uh, this setup can be dynamically used for uh, complete uh, college management. And uh, on top of the physical infrastructure, I told we will we will install something called hypervisor. So hypervisor is a bare metal operating system where it, the operating system operating system sits on a physical hardware, and which can allow um, users to create multiple instances of hyper, uh, the other additional operating system on top of it as virtual machines. So uh, typical hypervisor providers are VMware, Microsoft Hyper-V, and Citrix Zen Server. So these are the uh, three known um, uh, service providers who actually provides the hypervisors. And on top of the entire rack, this stack is, this is all about virtualization. On top of this virtualized stack, you can run any of these solutions. Okay. So for example, if you want to have a, uh, like, a, like this part, I'm going to cover containers also. What is Docker? The Docker, Docker is one of the container tool, and GitLab, and then you can Ansible playbooks for automation. Kubernetes again, one. Uh, this is one uh, um, container tool. So what it does is, instead of just making use of these servers just for running a VM, not only for VMs, we can also run additional. Uh, these uh, automation or container solutions in a single infrastructure. That is the best advantage. Because for students' environment, uh, um, we, we, we always rely on automation or containers. Why? Why? Because the reason why I'm saying is students will try to um, uh, uh, have um, developments in different combinations. So for for a particular program, they might not they may need some libraries. For some other program, they may not need those libraries. Or some during the development, they may need to update the libraries. In those situations, we cannot rely on one VM. So we always rely we always uh, uh, rely on containers. So I'll tell you what is container. So what I'm saying is this complete infrastructure what we have in the campus with this virtualization done can support all these solutions. So that the self service portal is the first thing wherein user hits. The students or the staff, they log into the portal and they request for resources. They can access what they, they can access what they are access, they are entitled to. For example, if uh, if, a, if a student who is going to do uh, the Java lab, when he logs in, he can request for a Java machine, or in the, he can request for an Oracle. So like that, you will have a list of catalog. So based on um, the services provided by the by the uh, college, uh, the lab team they can access the lab and they can uh, work on their development. Likewise, every solution what we discussed, right? All these uh, um, um, all these solutions we can put across in this particular uh, college data center. Okay, uh, maybe I will take the questions at the end. Okay, and uh, I'll just continue with that. Yeah. I know some of you have chatted and asked for some details, but I will respond to you by enough uh, during Q&A. And um, <clears throat> so like this is overall solution building blocks. You have automation tools can be integrated with your uh, virtual infrastructure. You have a self-service portal for um, requesting um, resources for the student and staff. From the college infrastructure, you have orchestration automation tools can be integrated with the solution so that you can create some workflows and you can schedule some jobs, automatic things all can be done. There are a lot of lots of tools available um, in, in the enterprise world. Okay, so um, and then the same thing with has the solution has should also should be integrated with the IT operations because when we actually uh, when we are going to run this kind of infrastructure uh, for the uh, entire college management for students and staff access and uh, provider it has uh, internet access everything is there right so we need to have a proper IT operations team maybe not a big team but uh, a smaller team who actually needs to manage and monitor this they should monitor what is happening how the health of these servers whether it is uh, how is the utilization how is the students login? How is the um, uh, um, uh, staff login? All those details, logging, auditing, everything should be monitored by some IT team so that the the, in the setup what we deployed for the current college infrastructure is really um, uh, utilized or not. That's what we are going to monitor in the, by the IT team. So for, for those IT operations also, we will have some tools for their monitoring, service management, and then backup. 
backup is also an important component, right? So when we have uh, certain virtual machines running, we should have a proper backup so that the in case of any kind of an issue with that VM, we can just you can just restore it from backup. Service management is mainly for uh, 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 raising tickets by the um, support tickets by the students and staff when they have any issue with their resources, they can um, raise a ticket and, and then they can report what is the issue they're facing, then the IT team can work on the issue and then resolve it. So like um, in, in the current lab setup, when somebody uh, having some issue, they immediately uh, report to the lab attender, right? So it, lab attender, what it does is it's just an operations job. Same thing, if in, in IT infrastructure, when you have everything virtualized, everything uh, in a running in IT service, then you need to have IT operations to manage that, right? And so with this solution blocks, what we can achieve, we are getting self-service provisioning, wherein users can request for resources, you can request for virtual machine, request for applications, then automated infra and platform deployment, because I don't really go and sit and do all these things manually. Okay? The virtual machines will be created automatically when I click uh, create VM, or when I run a script to run, create a virtual machine, or when I run an automation task to create a machine. All these things will be integrated with this hypervisor, and then it does all automated job. And then backup service, it's always there. We get a backup, um, enterprise level backup for the workloads or the virtual machines what we run and then logging integration with it operations like i said they can easily integrate with their service tools and then uh, that can be used by the it team so this is the overall building block how the solution will look like when we go with this particular architecture okay um and um virtualization i think it is not uh, new to us um, I will just take a quick whiteboard session, okay? And uh, I think most of you will be, uh, might be aware of uh, the virtualization tools like VMware, uh, Hyper V. Um, even uh, the VMware workstation, we can install it on our laptop, and we can uh, we can create virtual machines out of our laptop or desktop to create multiple uh, OS flavors, right? So um, you have um, the um, uh, servers, uh, servers sitting in the college data center, and then you create multiple virtual machines, right? And then uh, um, we create multiple virtual machines. And this can, all these virtual machines can have different OS flavors, okay? Some, uh, this can uh, run uh, Windows, and this can run uh, Linux, or this can run uh, Ubuntu. Based on the requirements, uh, for running the applications, so we run different, we create multiple virtual machines and do it. Okay, and the hypervisor I'm uh, right now for uh, for this explanation whiteboard explanation, I'm choosing the VMR uh, vSphere SXI. It is called as the VMR hypervisor, which can be installed on the supported physical server hardware, and then it can allow us to create um, uh, virtual machines to run different operating system and applications. So what happens is once you install the operating system, then you will have the application layer, right? So on every virtual machine, you have the OS layer and application layer, right? And this is the overall architecture of the vSphere infrastructure, nothing else. And you have other tools in the same vSphere infrastructure to manage multiple uh, servers like that, okay? If you have uh, like three or four servers, you can centrally manage all these servers using a single uh, console rather than managing by one by one. So you have something called, uh, that, is, that component is called uh, vCenter. Uh, it's it's also called as virtual center. Okay, so with that, um, um, so with that centralized management, it is easy for the IT administrators who are going to manage this core infrastructure, and they can centrally manage. And then the other features, like if, for example, obviously every physical has, uh, hardware will require some driver or firmware update, some Microsoft, some operating system level patches, right? We know what what is patches. Patches means security patches released by the vendor every month on month. So during the maintenance, maintenance for the physical infrastructure, it is very difficult because you need to reboot the machine, you need to take a downtime for your laptop or desktop, for example. But for this particular uh, virtual machine, what we can do is uh, using the mi migration technology in the, in the virtual infrastructure layer, we can just evacuate the machines from uh, this particular um, server to, we can put it onto this particular, the other server. We can just migrate. And this will become empty, these servers can be easily patched. Likewise, it can be migrated back. So all these um, virtualization technology, um, 
was developed in, in considering the high availability of your workloads. Workloads in the sense virtual machines, right? So that the, the virtual machines, which is necessary to run in the infrastructure in the college campus, becomes highly available anytime it does not go down. Okay, even if it goes down, we can restore it from backup. But yeah, the 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 uh, even if the virtual machine itself go go down, we can restore it from backup. But overall, the infrastructure is highly available because it is running on a high redundant servers managed by a, uh, some technologies of vSphere, right? On the, on the virtualization layer. So this is one example I'm just saying because I'm not taking a deep uh, uh, deep dive session on vSphere, but I hope you understand now because you're for us to run the, the virtual platform in the college campus. The main the main requirement is to have high availability for our desktops, for our applications, for our servers, right? For our um, uh, for our ERP application, whatever whatever application we run, whether it is a student lab application, a student lab setup, or the office ERP application, all these applications should be highly available so that the office will not have any kind of downtime, be it a student level or staff level or management level, right? So with that with virtual infrastructure, we can certainly achieve uh, at least 99.9 uh, SLA service level agreement um, for the um, virtual machines we run on the infrastructure, right? So this is one thing. And um, uh, the other aspect of, uh, um, I, I told, right, this virtual infrastructure can be easily integrated with the, your cloud. For example, if you have uh, AWS, right? So with that AWS subscription, if you are running out of resources, for example, if all these resources are completely utilized, you don't have enough capacity to run additional workloads. Okay, in 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 a traditional uh, setup, we buy we tend to buy more and more physical devices, right? If it's a laptop or even for a server, some colleges they run physical servers running directly running Windows Server operating system or Linux servers on physical boxes. In that scenario also, if you, even if you don't have virtual platform, if you have servers, you tend to buy more and more servers to add the increase the capacity. But virtual platform always gives a flexibility to extend um, your infrastructure from on-premise to cloud, or we call it as private cloud, okay? So this is the private cloud setup, or we call it as on-campus for education system. On-campus, and then, um, then this is your uh, public cloud. Can be uh, it can be AWS or Microsoft Azure or uh, Google Cloud, whatever, or whoever the service provider. Okay, so with this setup, now you understand, right? This becomes a hybrid cloud setup because you already have a private cloud inside the campus with some servers running, with all the virtual machines to cater the needs of the organization, needs of the institute, for the students, staff, and the management. And at the same time, if you're running out of capacity, if you if the entire uh, resources are utilized, you can always extend your footprint to the cloud subscription, and then the entire solution becomes hybrid cloud. For example, if, if even I told, even if the college or institute does not even have this basic infrastructure, the on-premise, the on-campus infrastructure, even if it is not there, they can still subscribe to directly to the public cloud service providers. And then uh, they can deploy all these machines there. Instead of running on the physical infrastructure with the virtual platform, they can really, they can always use um, the cloud service providers because they are they are also going to give the similar uh, offerings to the to their customers right they will give if you ask for a, a virtual machine with two CP, uh, two um, uh, two processor and two socket processor and 8 gb ram they will give a machine then you get a machine then you go and employ the application or you can also request for some applications to be installed and delivered as a service to the uh, users so those things can be easily achieved with the integration with public cloud so all these things will be able to achieve when you have a proper virtual infrastructure in place with all those uh, applications and tools and services installed and configured okay there are a lot of tools and install, uh, uh, solutions available from VMware, from Citrix, from Microsoft. Uh, so every vendor will have their own solutions to run uh, for the complete infrastructure and for the integration with the public cloud. Okay. So this is all about uh, the, the just a quick whiteboard session for the uh, virtual uh, virtualization. Let's move on with containers now. Okay. So <clears throat> containers. 
it's again uh, as you know container in a in a in a traditional world what is container it can it carries multiple things right if you take a shipping agent shipping company they have a big container it carries many things and it is not same thing it can be anything right so yeah, a single container can have uh, a, a car or a, 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 a pack of fishes uh, some frozen food it it has a mix of everything so the company docker when in the 2000 i think uh, 2005 or something i don't remember the exact year but that company what um, one second i am getting some double screen please wait uh, sorry for the inconvenience i think my my powerpoint had some problem yeah okay so let's move on uh, like i said uh, one second i think yeah containers so container is again um, in in terms of technical explanation it is a lightweight stand alone package that encapsulates a complete runtime environment including the application and the dependencies example libraries binaries and all into one single virtual machine for example till now i think you understand this particular component right? we have the hypervisor which contains the server hardware uh, star storage and network and you have this vcenter for centralized management of your all the servers and you have all the additional tools for operations uh, then uh, automation tools but on top of this we always run a virtual machine like i said virtual machines will have the um, uh, os kernel libraries and your applications right in a traditional setup in traditional vsphere setup in the vmware virtualization setup you will have something like server hardware hypervisor and then you have the um, virtual machines but the container can also run in a virtual machine that means the container contains multiple things it is not just one os so okay so in the, in the if you on the left hand side if you see um, the traditional containers will have multiple flavors multiple uh, uh, multiple flavors multiple different flavored libraries and different application in a single engine in a single here we don't uh, here we don't call kernel because it is going to use the host os that means whatever os is installed on the vm it will make use of that os and then it creates its own engine and it creates multiple instances within the single application that means it creates different flavors of os inside a single image and it gives uh, an environment running in a, a runtime environment to user to try and develop an application um, in 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 various various different uh, platform so that they can dynamically request a machine to run in ubuntu or dynamically they can request to run in uh, run their application in uh, red hat all those things can be given from a single vm okay so why i am specifically talking about containers is containers play a bigger role in education system because students they actually spend uh, time in developing different applications and different platform so they don't really need to wait for the it team or the it uh, uh, the lab team to 
provide those resources to try and out. Okay, but if you have a virtual infrastructure, then you can actually make use of these containers. Then they can uh, the containers they can actually uh, request for the required uh, the required operating system and the libraries, and then pretty much they can install their uh, they can develop their applications. So containers VM is a single instance. Containers are multiple instances of operating system in a single VM. Okay, so well, for example, each virtual machine runs a full or partial instance of an operating system, whereas multiple containers share a single operating system. That, like I said, you have a single host OS, nothing but your virtual machine OS, but inside that you will have multiple instances of containers running. It can have different flavors. That is the main advantage of containers. Okay, so let me go on with a little deeper uh, look on the containers. So some of the benefits we see, uh, like I said, um, um, in terms of agility. Agility means uh, it it actually gives the developer. We can we can consider developer student also a developer, right? Because they they develop something on their lab. So um, uh, they they it gives more agility to the developers in increased productivity because they can actually use this uh, devops tools that you have some dev the devops tools or microservice tools like uh, some uh, some automation tools like right? you have ansible chef puppet and, um, um, and and there are all those tools can be easily integrated uh, you have github all those two uh, devops tools can be used to make use easily integrated with this um, container so that they can try out, they can develop uh, their required applications in multiple platforms simultaneously. And uh, high availability is again one thing important. Uh, um, for example, if we're using Kubernetes, uh, it's again one other container solution like we have Docker, Kubernetes. So these container deployments will have high availability for their workloads. Okay? So that the application is become highly available and it does not uh, really depend on one machine because you have multiple instances of the same running in different with different combinations, so you can actually will have high availability for your uh, infrastructure to run the um, uh, development application development activity. Portability containers always in a in a physical can considering uh, thinking the containers in the physical world how it is being carried from one place to another place. Same thing, this application, the containerized application can run in any platform. So once you purchase the, once you develop the container application, uh, you can actually take it to a laptop and run it because it is not OS dependent. It is it is infrastructure agnostic. We call it as infrastructure agnostic. That means it does not really rely on what platform it is going to run because it is already container it become it become a container with the required os libraries and applications so it can run in any any platform and it can pretty much run from the laptop also right so that it becomes more portable so that we can take it take the application anywhere and continue our work and um, the resiliency is nothing but uh, data security okay so it is always container means it is in, in, encapsulated Isolated and abstracted from the OS and other containers, so it is all it is a more uh, resilient in terms of data security. And it follows some standards, uh, open containers initiate the standards, and then security is also there, right? because uh, you you tend to run multiple instances in a single VM, right? So there should be proper security measures should be taken so that it becomes compliance to the policies what we are going we follow in the uh, environment. Um, so and then automation. So, like I said, uh, making use of all those developed uh, automation tools like Ansible, uh, Chef, Puppet, uh, those things can easily be used for container to automate certain things. What developers do or what um, uh, students are going to develop in in the in those container builds, right? So, where so it's it's all layer based. Like we have in a, in a typical um, system, what we have, we have a hardware layer, physical layer. Then you have your OS layer, then you have your apps layer. But in this, even the apps layer, it is split into multiple things based on the, the uh, underlying operating system. And then those instances, what it does, it is actually being layered to the users in terms of multiple instances. And different libraries can be um, can be used in different combinations. For example, um, I'm not a core developer yet, but I, I can get in a survey like uh, if, if, if a person is using a Visual Studio, okay. So he might use different flavors of Visual Studio code, right? So he might use a different library version for each uh, Visual Studio. So he can parallelly run different versions of Visual Studio in a single machine and develop his uh, code and test it on all these uh, platform. 
okay so that 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 kind of example i can give uh, for container container thing. so to 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 do all these things to easily automate uh, certain things what developers do we can make use of all the devops tools and um, so this is one of the companies uh, who actually uh, provides this service container service docker and um, so uh, in their platform itself you can see their this is their logo they have this containers uh, um, the storage container logo so what it does it's, it's this con this architecture is very simple you have client nothing but your student he is going to run only three three basic uh, commands docker build docker pull and docker run that means when you actually build uh, environment you re you require okay i want uh, ubuntu um, 20.04 operating system i want a java um, java 8 version and i have python this version you put all the requirements to the docker host what it does is it gets to the image repository and gets uh, those machines built from the as containers and it delivers as a runtime environment that means user does not have any kind of uh, way to modify the operating system structure applications and configurations but whatever been required by the um, user will be delivered as a runtime environment to the user so that they can continue to develop what they are going to do in their platform right so this is the container uh, the um, the recent times all uh, people who does this microservices development uh, devops development they all use this uh, docker system so the containers are very much helpful for them um, you, as you know the benefits of that right so this is one of this is simple architecture and it uses the nginx engine and then uh, it actually builds the images on the docker host master host and then it actually delivers as containers to the client so they can build they can pull and they can run similarly you have um, a specific addition for docker for students is also available so the docker for student is a free addition actually you can access it um, uh, students can access it they can actually build their environment and they can to test their application or develop their applications so the main uh, the key uses of this uh, why they are going for this student additions understanding how docker first of all first and foremost the students should know how the docker works and they should uh, try to learn and try to build the skill on how the Docker container operating system works. And then they can actually start coding instead of spending time setting up your environment. You know what does this mean? You don't need to ask the lab team to set up that machine. You have to. You don't need to tell the uh, lab uh, administrator to say, "I want this VM with uh, this physical machine or this laptop desktop with uh, this OS," and then I want to try this application. Not like that. You just uh, request Docker to with the requirements. And then you can pretty much start working on your development activity by the, with that application what you're developing. So that kind of instantaneous um, response we get uh, when we request for resources. Right. And then collaborate easily with your peers and enable seamless grouping together. So this way we can actually with the works uh, with, like how we are um, uh, in a in a, um, a user group we just share things right we we. Uh, uh, what you call uh, the call user group or something we just uh, collaborate within the friends in, in some online communities the same way the docker community will have um, um, some groups with, with a group of uh, students they can actually collaborate really work and develop some application with a single docker instance and um, it also allows you to easily build application with a modern microservice architecture and um, so this is one one tool hub.docker.com you can request for a free trial and i think uh, um, it is very helpful for students also and docker is one thing for containers um, and then kubernetes is again one more uh, service provider for containers and uh, they also pretty much um, have the similar architecture and uh, but with they have a lot of lot and lot uh, advanced concepts in terms of integrating with the virtual platform okay so vmr has really worked with kubernetes they developed a, 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 a specific solution to integrate containers in the virtual platform in a more efficient way for managing the networks managing the overall uh, container architecture in a better way in virtual platform okay so containers and virtualization they play hand in hand they play in, uh, they, they really play together uh, with this modern uh, world they actually help what ultimately for the education institutions when they have uh, limited uh, resources of servers in their data center they can make use of virtualization to virtualize their platform to run multiple virtual machines 
inside the virtual machine they can create more and more containers so that it can it can even make uh, the utilization even this is called microservices right so you split you you try to develop a solution which actually going to use as, uh, with a with a minimal setup and gives out a maximum output okay and um, the third point is virtual desktop infrastructure so this is all about access now so now we have data center in place now we have applications in place for example for students we have a, a proper solution developed inside the data center wherein they can request for a um, service like i want a, a virtual machine with so on operating system to to run my lab right but how are they going to access it there are ways to access it wherein they can go to the lab room they can go to the computer lab room they can sit in front of a physical laptop or a desktop what has been connected to the lab network and then they can access the solution what if they want to have a virtual um, desktop infrastructure that means they don't it, it is not a physical presence is required uh, on on the table on the lab so virtualization is still the base platform here the vmware hypervisor is still a base platform on top of that we can create even virtual machines for desktop operating system not just the server operating system we can run windows 10 or we can run uh, uh, linux desktop or os flavor any type of uh, um, um, desktop we can run so the it's again a virtual machine so we don't really need to dedicate some physical uh, desktops in the lab network right so it can again it's prone to failure right so we can make use of this uh, virtual desktop infrastructure this is very very helpful for uh, student you know i, I recently worked uh, with uh, one of the universities in um, malaysia they came up with this uh, vda solution uh, along with the virtual platform for their uh, for their four campuses in three different uh, i think four different um, city uh, entities or campus buildings in different uh, uh, places in uh, in, the, in their in their city okay so it was a properly connected network they had a very well established uh, um, campus data center with connected networks with secure uh, secure internet access so we we were able to deliver this um, virtual desktop infrastructure for the students so they can real time request a lab they can real time request some uh, uh, some classes they can attend from anywhere because of the pandemic we came with the solution this uh, came very much um, helpful for the universities and even for uh, some organizations who let them use us to connect uh, their uh, for, to work from home also this helped right so vd is one of the component in virtualization which can be leveraged uh, for the uh, access to those services running inside a data center and uh, users can connect from any location anywhere uh, that they have the digital workspace concept comes and the major vendors are citrix microsoft and vmware they are the key players in the video market also just like hypervisor uh, citrix has uh, citrix uh, zen app zen server zen desktop we call microsoft we have microsoft uh, virtual desktops and then vmware horizon desktop so all these competent uh, products uh, give us uh, this video uh, service to the students or the users to connect to the infrastructure and this is how the video architecture works you have the students sitting with their own devices so it can be the lab lab provided uh, desktop or laptop or they can connect using their ipad they can connect to the laptop they can they can connect their own devices because everywhere you have the firewall restrictions right so always the the this is the this is the, let us assume this is the college data center which has servers hypervisor and then you have virtual machines now we come to that virtual infrastructure right these virtual machines are nothing but windows 10 nothing but uh, the the desktop os running vms for the lab uh, access so end of the day users the student can come inside the organization network come to the lab lab uh, network they can use the lab provided desktop they can connect to their uh, vms and then do it but this laptop it is not necessarily the one which we currently have it can be a it can be what you call zero client a thin client we call it thin client that means it is a very uh, small footprint uh, machine which will have uh, a monitor connectivity usb connectivity and internet connectivity nothing else it will have a very minimal uh, uh, cpu and ram configuration and after what it is going to be, do is it is going to stream the virtual machines running inside the data center as a real machine to the user in the lab 
So uh, you must have seen uh, smaller uh, boxes kept in some banks and other institutions. They use this virtual desktop for connecting to the actual resources inside the data center. Same virtual machine can also be accessed from an outside network, from the hostel, from the campus, from the hostel, from anywhere. From anywhere, we can actually connect to these resources, provided if we have all these solutions installed, like you have access point, you have the firewall in between, and then you have uh, um, all this solution in place, then definitely you can make use of this virtual, virtualized infrastructure to access even from external network, right? It is not only for users, not only for the students, it is also for staff to access their um, key uh, data inside the um, organization kept inside the institution. They have some important things, right? They can access anything from the uh, virtual infrastructure, right? So main, main thing, so <clears throat> for a college campus, Infrastructure is one important thing, applications one important thing, and then access is an important thing. So all these three things can be easily achieved with the uh, virtual infrastructure platform. And uh, this is one of the uh, this architecture for Citrix. Citrix I told right, Citrix is also one component, uh, one uh, competitor for uh, VDA. They also provide VDA service, and they also have their own components. You have this hardware layer, nothing but your servers, your data center running with uh, physical servers. Virtual, uh, virtual machines and the same virtual machines can be accessed by the user from any location, be it inside the uh, data center or outside the uh, campus or at home or at hostel. So all these technology solutions are very much available, provided we, if you we have those uh, skill sets to build the solution or if you have, uh, if the organization reach out to the uh, right uh, consulting services who does this, so the, who does this kind of setup, then the entire the entire college data center can be virtualized for all their purpose, not only for student. Like I said, it can they can run any type of applications in the data center, be it a lab, be it uh, the ERP for the office administration, or be it um, the library for digitalized libraries. Okay. Um, this is I already told the in the digital workspace concept wherein you can access. Um, any if you access the access the application or device from any devices from the data center so the only thing is uh, it gives um, more secure access and um, uh, sharing and collaboration again thing application and desktop association like we saw vda one of the key things which can actually achieve access using the digital workspace so i have taken this entire session considering um, in in terms of uh, the vmr um, technology Every company has this or has all these service offerings, be it a hypervisor layer or be it uh, the virtual machines layer or be it uh, the uh, desktop layer or the workspace layer. Every organization, be it Microsoft or Citrix and VMware, they have their own products for all these levels. And all put together, we call this, we call this complete virtual infrastructure solution, right? And... Um, <clears throat> I will go for a Q&A now because uh, I think it is, uh, I'm speaking for a long time. I don't know whether you uh, grabbed it, uh, what I said, but uh, let us have a quick uh, Q&A. Um, first, let me take uh, the Q&A from the uh, chat and then uh, we can uh, go for a real uh, Q&A uh, over the phone or over the call, sorry. So where is the chat? Okay, I have um, first of all, sorry, uh, Mr. Vairamuthu, I didn't see your uh, message. You asked me to turn on the video uh, because I uh, usually when we present something, right? It is actually it will be a hindrance uh, when you actually uh, have. Uh, now I can turn on my video, not a problem. Okay, so what is that? And the next question I have uh, from Jay Seelan. 
any live examples of students learning access this open source good in computer science related tutorials um i didn't really understand your question if you can talk and you can maybe i can understand your concern and then i can answer that because you said any live examples of students learning access this open source good one in computer science related tutorials okay so could you just explain in what context you are asking this is it like learning some open source tools for uh, those computer science students to learn these technologies or what what is that sir yes sir you are said no same thing sir i am also asking. okay okay so um, thank you sir okay so there are a lot of um, tools available okay um, especially with this recent uh, pandemic situation right every organization be it a, a virtualization platform or the containers um, they have given student editions okay so you can use users uh, they will give some limited access to their infrastructure and uh, with some limited resources and some some limited time also they specify some 30 days or 60 days so do, during that with they give it some with some duration you can uses uh, students can access those um, um, resources to learn the technology right and uh, they can uh, they can also make use of those uh, technology with the given um, access by those companies okay um so docker is one thing i, I shared so users can uh, students can request their own login in the docker portal they can very much request some virtual machines to uh, they, they can very much request some containers and they can still try out by giving a hands on by installing the application or uh, developing application in that platform okay so though the, that level of um, uh, access is now available for students be it a learning for for learning uh, training modules or even for live demo or for hands on uh, session they can also get it okay so maybe i can i can share with uh, um, wasn't the ma'am about uh, with those links for the uh, learnings and live demos okay and um jason you asked for the demo and uh, i specifically uh, didn't concentrate on one particular technology to give a demo for this because as you must have understood now this is the entire solution put across with the combination of multiple components it is not just one it is not just the vsphere it is not the vmr hypervisor it is an overall solution which builds the entire infrastructure as a virtual platform right so i i initially also told uh, to us the ma'am that i will not be doing any kind of demo because this is not a technical uh, topic on a particular topic because last time when i did um, the vda session i was able to give a demo because i there was more specific to vda where how the vda was set up how it is accessed all those things but this is the overall architecture for a com for a college or education infrastructure to see how they can make use of these technologies and build their infrastructure to run this solution okay so i'm sorry i do not have any kind of uh, live demo but um i, I hope I, i i think the technologies and the concepts what i covered would have given you some understanding about how the college infrastructure will make use of this technology okay and um um so i don't see any other question apart from these questions are there any other questions from anyone good morning sir this is vairamuthu good morning sir nice to meet you through this forum <clears throat> so i have a basic question i am not an expert i don't know anything today only i learnt about uh, whatever the topics you have given to us virtualization yep. so you said the hypervisors uh, your number of uh, instances can be there mm -hmm. in a virtual machine are there yeah. any limitations for the numbers no. number instance number of virtual machines number of number of uh, yes sir as yes, virtual machines yeah okay so the number of virtual machines which you can run in a single machine depends on the number of resources available so what are the resources when we have we are talking about we are talking about cpu ram and disk right so like i said forget about this but running the vsphere we can also there is a one free application called situ vmr uh, workstation with that workstation application you can install it on your laptop and then on top of that application workstation you can create virtual machines okay even from a laptop we can do virtualization so for, so what it is going to do again at the end of the day that workstation application it is going to take the resources from your laptop suppose if your laptop has uh, 8 gb of ram it is going to give you option to create virtual machines out of the 8gb 
the the base operating system which is running on the laptop might be using some 1 gb or 2 gb so it is it is still identifies the remaining 6 gb right 6 gb or 5 gb is free with that 5 gb available you can create a virtual machines to run different os flavor for example if your laptop has a windows you can create a virtual machine to run windows ubuntu so inside your laptop you have two things so end of the day the virtual machines capacity what we are going to run depends on the available capacity on the physical server just like a desktop laptop servers also will have the same resources in a higher capacity okay so the our laptop will have 8 gb but servers will have 80 gb or 8 tb like that understood yes so based on the available capacity we can create multiple machines so as such there is no limit uh, i think the the maximum configuration something every vendor will have for example one host can have up to thousand machines or something okay uh, the, again it depends on the resource available okay okay Thank you. And uh, my next question is, uh, mm -hmm. when can we prefer containers and when can we prefer virtual machines for uh, the in institutional uh, educational institutions? Yeah, so um, that's a good question. So for these two things to start with, we need the virtual platform, right? So we uh, the virtualization should be there to run the virtual machines and containers. So when we are going for virtual machines and when we are going for containers, something I will tell you now, because as you see in the, the whiteboard, I hope you can see my screen, as you see in the whiteboard, we have four physical servers. That means your yes, physical servers in the data center and it is running some virtual machines. But there are some scenarios wherein the users or the students, they want to try um, the development of their application on different platforms. So for that, instead of provisioning more and more virtual machines, end of the day, virtual machines, again, a machine is going to get provisioned inside the server on the virtual platform, and it is going to consume some resources, right? For example, if this virtual machine is running with uh, uh, four CPU and eight GB RAM, if you're going to create one more virtual machine, it is again going to consume more resources. But instead of that, with the given resources, with the given VM, single VM, we can run multiple containers in it different flavors of runtime instances so that is where the container plays a bigger role so this answers the second question that means if you if the infrastructure is very limited if the infrastructure does not have enough capacity to uh, provision more and more virtual machines then you can always go for containers wherein container itself is not only for the space utilization concept but it it can it, it helps in a different lot ways it, it's a runtime right so it gives you a different uh, run runtime environment to try and out uh, the development on multiple platforms that is one that's main use case but if the resources itself is constrained instead of creating more and more virtual machines we can target for containers especially in 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 the college campus environmental they will not have a bigger data center right they will only have limited servers so if at all they are having some virtual platform like vmware or hyper v or something we can definitely make use of these containers to run and the containers within a virtual machine to have have to better utilize the resource okay thank you and uh, I, I i i heard about a term called on demand instances mm -hmm. uh, can you can you please tell me something about it uh, on-demand instances uh, in terms in, of uh, in in an Amazon Web Service in the cloud is it related okay, okay. to virtualization? Um, see, um, the cloud platform what we they are giving as a platform as a service, right? So cloud, we are actually requesting a resource. You are actually we are actually requesting. I need a machine with this 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 resources. For example, if you log into the Amazon uh, AWS portal, you click a request a machine, you when you click request the machine, it will ask you what configuration you want. It will tell you how many CPUs, how many RAM, what is the disk space you want. When you click submit, you don't know whether you are getting a physical machine or virtual machine. End of the day, we are just accessing that particular machine only, right? The operating system we are accessing. So on-demand instances are nothing but the, uh, you already have some subscription in AWS, right? And when you are going to, when you are going to the AWS portal, when you request a resource, on demand means it instantaneously provides a machine. That means for us, it is very it is instantaneous for a user who is requesting an instance, instance nothing but a virtual machine, or it can be some resource. Okay, it can be an application or it can be a machine. Whatever the resource or instance we are requesting on demand means that is already provisioned 
already provisioned and kept it ready by the service provider, be it AWS or uh, um, Microsoft Azure. Instantaneously, we are getting that. Okay, so instead of waiting, instead of requesting and waiting for long time to get the resource, I don't really need to wait. And one more thing, on demand taken can be taken another way. As and when you need it, you can request for it. For example, uh, in AWS, if you have subscription for uh, to run 100 virtual machines, okay, you're not asking all 100 immediately, right? At the uh, upfront, you're not asking. You're asking only 10 machines first. Then after something, you need some more machines. Then on demand, you can request for additional machines, and that can be provisioned based on the subscription what you have. So they will check, okay, you already have 100 machines subscription, you already utilized 10, and now on demand, you're asking for five more. It will give five more machines like that, okay? That is called on demand. So that same thing, not only on AWS, it can also be done on the virtual platform also, even with private cloud setup also we can do. So that will give you more uh, um, uh, more efficient way to manage the capacity, right? Instead of, uh, for example, if you are running four uh, servers with some thousand virtual, hundred virtual machines, you don't need to provision all hundred machines upfront. Okay, as and when the students log in and request for a machine, we can provision that. So that kind of provisioning uh, automation capacity is available even on virtual infrastructure using the on-premise private cloud setup. Okay, so the, the there are a lot of applications uh, from VMware and they call it as um, vSphere is one that's hypervisor, then vRealize automation is there, vRealize orchestrator. There are lots and lots of products are there from VMware. You can go to VMware portfolio, uh, their website, you will get to know about all the products, what they have, okay. So virtualization is the base platform. On top of the virtualization, we can run all these automation jobs, all these um, building or application uh, provisioning jobs. Okay. Okay. That answers, yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. My next. Uh, uh, I sir, please don't mistake me. I'm no just problem. a beginner. Beginner. Yeah. I just wanted to ask one more thing. Uh, is it possible for me to have more than one process run in a Docker container? Are there any uh, difficulties? in that case will there be any difficulties if i run more than one process in a docker container or is it encouraged um what kind of process you are, are you talking about in terms of from uh, multi-threading or um... uh, yes 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 sir yes sir yes sir okay definitely it is possible yes yeah so the like i explained this the server operating the server infrastructure what we have is symmetric multi-processing okay, smp based the server itself, uh, the where the virtual workloads are running, it supports semantic multiprocessing for running the virtual machines uh, in multiple instances in a single uh, hardware. Likewise, inside the container, you will have different flavors like operating system, right? So those operating system will always support hyper-threading, okay? So if you have a single thread application or a multi-thread application, it does not matter. Unless if you have a single thread application which can run only on a single thread, then you need to have a single core for that, for that machine to run that application. But if the application can run in a multi-thread environment, it can have, okay? So your, your, your machine can handle multiple requests onto the CPU using this uh, hyper-threading mechanism. So container also, end of the day, container also, you are going to run the same operating system. Okay, it does not have a separating. Only thing is, it is just a runtime. Instead of we deploying the machine every time and installing the application, installing the operating system, they are giving some uh, bundle, kind of, bundle kind of a solution wherein the operating system and the required libraries and instances are put together and give us as a runtime environment. Okay, so you get only the runtime of the OS and then you would start working on the applications. Understood now? So okay, it, it purely supports uh, multi-threading, yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Any other questions from anyone uh, on any of these topics? or even in general, so you can ask me. Okay, I, I take that silence as a no. 
Um, so, thank you for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Um, I thank the uh, um, the management and uh, the college. Um, I, I mean, and uh, the staff committee and uh, the um, head of the department. Everyone, I really thank for giving me this opportunity. And in spite it was a very hectic uh, week for me, I was engaged on multiple projects. In fact, I I, I was awake till 7:30 uh, today, and then slept for a few hours, and then I joined this um, session. In fact, uh, the was asking, can this can we reschedule this meeting because I was doing night shift yesterday because of some urgent uh, requirement. But um, I didn't want to miss this, so I said I will manage it because. Uh, it's. I am um, proud to um, present uh, myself um, in, in the college where I studied. Uh, this is my third attempt, third uh, time I'm doing this. I'm really uh, uh, thanking the uh, everyone to for giving me this opportunity. Okay, I hope uh, the session would have been really helpful and in, in understanding how the education infrastructure can be uh, leveraged, uh, uh, used uh, the <coughs> virtual infrastructure in running there. Uh, data center or the campus network in an effective way. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you very much for your excellent presentation and informative session amidst your busy schedule. Once again, on behalf of organizers and on behalf of our college management principal and IQAC, I wholeheartedly thank you for your presence and for your valuable address. Next formal word of thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you for our inspirational speech and ideas. New, no duty is more urgent than that of returning thanks. With this note, I like to invite Mr. N. Sevagopanian, sir, to deliver vote of thanks. Uh, very fine. Good afternoon to one and all. Uh, I am having much pleasure to propose a vote of thanks on this auspicious occasion. Uh, first of all, I, I am very happy, thankful to the management and the principal sir, Dr. C. Assault, for granting us permission to carry out the FDB in a nice manner. Uh, next, I thank our HOD madam, Dr. J. Jabakumati Bilawa Sindhimiram, uh, who is the backbone of our department activities. Um, and next, I thank our organizing secretary, Mrs. K. Meena madam, uh, a wonderful organizing the program. Thank you, thank you, madam. Uh, next, I would like to thank our resource person, uh, Mr. Jonathan Jabez, uh, sir, uh, because of uh, amidst his uh, busy schedule, uh, the whole Hartley accepted our invitation and uh, come over here to deliver the available uh, sir. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Uh, the next, uh, I thank our uh, participants and uh, staff members uh, who are showing the great interest uh, towards attending uh, this FDB. Uh, last but not least, I, I would like to thank one and all. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.